This is what you need to know after you make a shot on a whitetail. Here are some post shot blood tracking tips on how to recover more deer with marginal shots. Everything you do as a hunter from the front of the deer to the back of the deer has a consequence. Sometimes it's a good consequence and sometimes it's a bad consequence. So shot placement is critical the whole way because there are no two shots that are created equal because there's so many factors. The bow, the arrow, the broadhead, the angle, the distance. I mean, all this stuff creates a different scenario. And yes, there's some similarities, but that's why you kind of have standards. Okay, if I hit here and I'm unsure, I'm going to wait this long. If I hit here and I'm unsure, you know, that at least gives you a better chance, you know, from your shot placement to recover your deer. If you're unsure of the hit, you recover, you you get a pass through. And we'll, we'll this will be just a, a regular white tail example. So guy hunting out of a stand, 18 feet up, shots 25 yards. It's kind of somewhat typical. Not sure where they hit the deer. They get a pass through. They're able to recover the arrow. So they're looking at their arrow post shot, trying to identify where they hit based on the blood on the arrow. Walk through some examples, like bright blood, bubbly blood, dark red blood. Sure. And what, what that means. Sure. So the farther up front you are, of course, the better chance of a lung shot to get that nice pink frothy blood. And I think it's important to define froth. Froth is different than bubbles. And that's important to know because if you shoulder shoot a deer and you that deer is able to get air under that scapula was it when it's running the blood mixes with all that because the scapula isn't permanently attached bone to bone to the whitetail right it's right. that big blade and it's gonna just keep moving over the rib cage there it sucks air and it creates bubbles and so people think oh i got this great blood you know i got this great lung there's shot because yep. there's bubbles and it's not so it, it will be a darker blood when that happens a lot of muscle blood that's dark and it'll be bubbly where if you get that nice light pink froth you know just looks like foam that is that is great stuff you know that's really you know you got into your lungs if you have a ton of nice red blood everywhere and it's soaked the ground you can pretty much be sure you got some heart and a lot of times that will be mixed together the further you go back the darker the blood gets so the second you are south of the diaphragm and you're into that liver, you're now into your dark red, red bloods. And, you know, the, the liver is a filter. It's filtering the blood all the time. And that blood will also typically smell different than lung blood. Lung blood to me is clean. I don't smell a lot of iron in it. You get that livery shot and it smells like liver. I mean, it actually has that really strong iron smell and it's really dark and will have little uh, oftentimes little pieces of liver in it. And then as you go back, you're going to start to lighten up on your blood because you're getting into your muscle blood again and your guts uh, and your stomach. You're also wiping a lot of stuff off of your arrow as mm, you pass through. Yep. And so now you become a nasal investigator. You need to be able to have a little bit of sense of smell and smell your arrow and your broadhead. And your broadhead will usually contain whatever contents when you're back from the diaphragm, it'll have something in it to give you the, the clue that tells you what to do. And so you have a four-chambered stomach. Every chamber has a different kind of contents in it. Um, the first two, when you talk about the rumen and the reticulum, it's basically the same. So it's big chunks, you know, you actually will see little pieces of fiber from sticks or branches, whatever they're eating, you will see it whole half acorns because deer suck at chewing food, right? So that's why they're rumen, so they can get that back up and chew it again. So the first two chambers are like that then you get into the omasum and that stuff will be dry like dry sawdust and a bright green because that part of the stomach sucks all the moisture out of everything so you get a different part so you know you're a little farther back towards the guts and then the last one is the only part of the stomach where true enzymes start digestions and everything gets liquidy real liquidy it's still that green color and it'll start to smell less sweet and then you get into the guts of course and the farther you go back you're eventually in a poop and so you can see and smell that on the arrow as well let's get into some uh some general wait times based on your blood identification on on that arrow sure I, I i still like to wait even though i'm sure I, as hard as it is i like to if i can give myself at least an hour i feel better and i'm still going in cautious i'm following looking ahead ready for a follow-up shot even when i'm really sure but most often if you really hit the right spot in the heart the right spot in the lungs you have heard or seen the deer go down 
right? So you're already in a good space. But if you heard that deer go for a long ways, then that's the longer you should be waiting. So it's a variable type of deal. And a deer will go a long, long way on one lung. A long way, sometimes hundreds of yards. What about uh, what about liver hits? Oh man, go home, go home, get a good night's sleep, come back eight hours later, and find your deer exactly where it laid down. Yep, there's no doubt. I mean, liver liver shots are good shots, but you got to give that six to eight hours window. So that's a good one where you can go home, have a sleepless night, and at daybreak go find your deer laying yep. exactly where it was. What about uh, you know? I've never seen this but again this is i guess an old wise tale or whatever you want to call it about hurt deer going to water is that something that no it's baloney okay (laughs) i will tell you that a gut shot deer eventually may go to water because they can run a if they're hit far enough back where we have no vitals involvement they may get a fever they'll feel sick they may feel that water is something that'll help them and so, yes, that now becomes something that's possible. But the people that are saying every hit deer will go to water, there's or, and they won't go uphill, and all these other wives' tales, it's just baloney. That deer's going to go wherever it wants to go. And when they're wounded, they do different things. You know, uphill, downhill, through the thicket, get on off trail. People say, oh, they'll stay on the trail because it's easier walking when they're wounded. No, I mean, there's just... You know, that's what makes tracking so much fun is all these variables that are mixed in. But water is mostly a wives' tale. It's a possibility. And the other thing is most of us are hunting around water. There's always a creek. There's always a pond, you know, at least out this side of the Mississippi, right? right? And so, I mean, most of my hunting areas are on waterways. And so, of course, the deer just happens to die by water. But I think as a general rule that you shouldn't be thinking, all right, I haven't been able to find this deer. I'm going to focus only on water sources. Where's the water? Yeah, where's the closest water is there any other general knowledge tips advice on post-shot recovery blood 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 trailing i think that cameron hit it on the head time is your best friend and the more time the better your chances no matter what the shot is and especially if you don't know what the shot is it's just it's hard as it is to do it's best just to back out and give them some time